Well, welcome to our, our Monday Thursday communion service, marking this occasion uh, together remotely. I'll be uh, eating bread and drinking wine a bit later on behalf of all of God's family in this area. Uh, and I invite you to just settle yourselves in the presence of the living God, to gather what you need around you, to, to join in from afar, to light a candle maybe, but above all, just to still yourselves in God and be aware of his presence with us just now. Uh, words you can join in with will appear on the screen. Say. So, Let me share the screen. There we go. And if you have a candle that's lit, now is the time to light it, to uh, remember God's presence among us above all. And you can join in the words in bold. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my light and my salvation. So I welcome you to this occasion on Maundy Thursday. The word Maundy uh, means commandment. Maundy, a mandate, a commandment. Uh, and we remember on this Thursday a commandment that Jesus gave to his disciples. <clears throat> on that last day just before their last meal together he'd gathered them he'd spent the day with them teaching them praying with them explaining various things but he gave them one big commandment and that's uh, what this day is named after historically the church thought this is the thing we're going to focus on uh, this day we want to make this key this last message this last commandment that Jesus gave and it's very simple he said to his disciples love one another and so this Maundy Thursday, this Commandment Thursday, it's Love One Another Thursday. That's, uh, that's really what we're remembering. And, and over the next half an hour or so, um, we're just going to go through some prayers. We'll confess our, our, our sins, our failings, and, and seek after God's forgiveness. We'll hear some uh, accounts from the Bible. We'll say the set prayer for today. We'll uh, recite what we believe together. I'll lead us in a few short prayers. And then we'll, I'll break bread and drink the wine here. And the service ends in an unusual way. Normally we'd finish with a blessing and then send people out. On this service, uniquely for the year, we finish with a blessing, but then we remember the night that was coming for Jesus. We call to mind what was happening after that Last Supper. Uh, as Jesus stayed up all night and then we go with that in our minds to, to, to the night that we're going to have remembering the night that Jesus had these verses Maundy Thursday the great commandment our Lord Jesus Christ says if you love me keep my commandments unless I wash you you have no part with me. So let us confess to Almighty God our sins against his love and ask him to cleanse us. We say these words together. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. 
May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Prayer for today. God our Father, you have invited us to share in the supper which your Son gave to the church to proclaim his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading, a very short one, Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26. He said this, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. John 13, some select verses. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realise now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean though not every one of you. For he knew he was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also, also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. When he was gone, Jesus said, now the son of man is glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my, dis my disciples, if you love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to Christ our Lord. You may or may not want to stand as we recite the creed together, this uh, really ancient form of the creed found in Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. 
he humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. I'll lead us in a few short prayers now. And if you would join in the words in bold. Father, on this, the night he was betrayed, your son Jesus washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us and humble us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church in this place. Fill us with fresh love and the ability to see Christ in one another. Lord, hear us and unite us. On this night, Jesus prayed for those who were to believe through their message. We pray for the mission of your church, for those exploring faith, for those serving others and those being served, for all those new to faith and those pursuing baptism and confirmation. Lord, hear us and renew our zeal. On this night, Jesus commanded his disciples to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for those who have been rejected or feel unloved. Lord, hear us and fill us with your love. On this night, Jesus reminded his followers that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, hear us and give us your peace. You may want to call to mind specific people or situations where you want to pray and uh, particularly just want to lift Lorna to God's care now. He'd bring her to full recovery and we'd be in, in, uh, able to fellowship with her soon. You might want to mention out loud or in the quietness of your hearts now in, in your homes, just those where you long to see God helping and working. And Jesus, you see all the people, all the situations, all the things in our hearts that we offer to you. We pray that you would sovereignly work to bring heaven to bear on the affairs of earth. In all these things that we've mentioned, that we've lifted to you in our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And as we prepare ourselves to share in the memory of what Jesus did on that his last supper here on earth sharing the bread and the wine we prepare ourselves by listening or you might want to join in uh, to this song
The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit, and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing.
accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your son, our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Except through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. We say together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. And so we say this prayer together. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament, you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to consume your body and blood that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruit of your redemption. For Christ's sake. Amen. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you 
always. Amen. As I said, the service doesn't end with the blessing. But with this um, remembering what happened next for Jesus, having shared that supper, having uh, prayed with his disciples, having instructed them, having given them that commandment, he sat down with them, he told them uh, what was going to happen. He said that one of them would betray him. They all said, no, it's not going to be me. We'd never do that. Judas at one point says, surely you don't mean me, Lord. And Jesus says, you know, you've said so. But Jesus broke the bread, blessed the wine, shared it out and, uh, and told them that he was going to die so that they could be forgiven of their sins. And they sung a hymn and they went out to the Mount of Olives. And when they got there, Jesus told them that, um, that they would fall away from him. All of them would fall away. And, uh, of course, Peter says, it's not going to be me. Even if everyone else does, I won't fall away. Jesus tells him, before the cock crows three times, you'll, you'll disown me. Or before the cock crows, you'll disown me three times. He told them as well, he wasn't just going to die to so that their sins could be forgiven he said to them i'm going to rise again i'll meet you in galilee in three days time you know after that i'll be there uh, look out for me come and see me galilee's the place but after that rather sober time at the mount of olives he led them up uh, to a place called gethsemane and he said okay you disciples stay here i'm just going to take peter james and john we're going to go a bit further and as they went a bit further, just the four of them, Jesus began to be very distressed, very upset, very um, uh, sorrowful, very troubled. And he said to Peter, James and John, OK, now you three just stay here. I'm going to go a bit further on my own. I just need to do something alone, do, say some prayers. And he went and he sweated blood and he agonised over what God was calling him to do, over what it was he was about to endure. And three times he came back to his disciples and they weren't watching and praying like he'd asked. They'd fallen asleep. The spirit was willing. The flesh was weak. The third time he comes back to them, he says, OK, get up. Now's the time. We're not going to waste any more time. We're going. So they all rise. They go. And as they go, Judas comes with a band of soldiers and, and, and high priests and uh, clubs and swords and all sorts of crowd, large crowd. And uh, Judas walks to Jesus and kisses him to identify this is the one you want to arrest. They arrest him. There's a bit of a struggle. Jesus says, don't fight. And his disciples run. So Jesus is betrayed, deserted, left. And on that same night, he was led to the house of Caiaphas, the high priest, where he was falsely accused, beaten, mocked and condemned to death. It lasted all night, this ordeal. And as the cock was crowing in the morning, mm -hmm. Peter had run and he had denied Jesus three times before the cock crows to mark the beginning of the next day, Good Friday where we continue the story, maybe at the two o'clock meditative service. There's still places there if you want to book with Peter. What a night. What, what a last day. What an evening. What a night that Jesus went through. Not in the comfort of his own bed, as I'm sure we will be this evening. But as we draw our time together, to a close, this formal Maundy Thursday dismissal. Christ was obedient unto death. Go in his peace. Thank you for joining with us this evening. Just wish God's blessing on your weekend. Look forward to celebrating the resurrection with you, especially 
on Easter Sunday. Look out for the cross walking around the Mulbarton village tomorrow morning. Thank you, Adrian. Okay. Thank you.